You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones, and we're in for another good treat today. We're going to talk about choices. Oh, choices. You know, it's a wonderful thing to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has given each individual a will, and within your will, you have an opportunity to make a choice of which way you want to go. You know, God loves us so, so very much that he'll not force his way into our lives. But when we become willing to do his will, oh my goodness, you are in for a wonderful, wonderful life. He tells us over in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter number 30, we're going to start off with verse number 19. And I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, what's it there for? Choose life that both you and your descendants may live that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So the word is telling us that he's already set this table as it were to say. Now it's up to you and it's up to me to make that choice of what we want to do in life. You know, we're now headed into a new year, year 2017. Oh my goodness. The Lord has graced us to, to cross over into this new 2017. That is something that is awesome. So you need to, we all need to sit and think about what it is that we want to do for this new year. What kind of plans and purposes do you have in mind? You know, do you want to just stay in the same position that you left out in 2016? I think that's a very disappointing thing or position to be in. It's always a good choice to will to want to do better. And the, the thing about this walk through the word of God, God gives us the opportunity to do better. However, it's up to us to make the choice. Let's talk a little bit more about what the Lord has done or provided for us. We're going to go and look at Ephesians chapter number one. And this is uh, the Apostle Paul here, and he's speaking. And Paul, uh, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace 
talking about grace, unmerited favor to you and peace. Oh, family, peace. God is the only one that can give us the true peace that passeth all understanding from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose. And we're talking about making choices. It says, just as he has chose us in him, my, my, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Wow, that's a whole lot. He said that we should be holy. And you know, we can do this. It's a matter of a choice. I can will to, to be good. I can will and I can choose to do right. I am the one that has to make that personal choice. Now, always remember, family, that the choice that one makes is the choice that you will live with, good, bad, or indifferent. But it is the choice, and there are consequences to every choice that man makes. So let's move on. It says that we can be holy or should be holy because he says, I am holy. And he says, you be holy. And the thing about it is that's something that we can do. It's not, it's not an impossible goal. It is very possible. It's just a matter of our will and our choice to want to do right, to do things in line with the word of God. And then he's telling us that without blame, before him in love. And we can do this, family. It's a matter of our will. You see, God has made each man, as it were to say, a free moral agent. And with that free, as a being a free moral agent, we have a will. You see, the soul of my, man, which contains the mind, the will, and the intellect. And so we, he's not made us like a puppet on a string, but he's given us the choice. We are the ones. And so he can't, he's, he's placed things out there for us. He's given us everything that the word of God says, but it's up to us to make that choice and line up with what his word says. And this is something that can be accomplished. We can do this. Now, going or moving on in number five, verse number five, it says, having predestined us to the adoption as sons. Predestined. That means, yes, because God knows all things. He knows. In other words, he knows who will choose to accept Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. He, he knows that. But he has to give man an opportunity to make the choice. He cannot force his will on man. It says, having predestined us to adoption. You see, we have been adopted. Oh, hallelujah. And we have been brought into the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. It's such an awesome privilege that he has allowed us. Adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. Oh, my goodness, that is so precious. According to the good pleasure of his will. And he desires us to be or become born again and be in the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he can't make the choice for us. That's something that we have to make up in our mind, in our, our choice, our will, to line up with his will according to what his word says. Now, number six, it says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, that is, his grace, that unmerited favor, oh my goodness, while we were yet undeserving, but his grace, hallelujah, by grace, in other words, the word tells us that we're saved over in Ephesians 2. 
and number eight. And it says, by grace are you saved by, and not of yourselves. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about is he has provided that grace for us by which he, he are, made us accepted in the beloved. Oh, awesome family. He's already accepted us. He's already provided for us. All we have to do is receive of what he has prepared and given to us through his word. Let's look at number seven. It says in him, in who, in through, in other words, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have redemption. That means we have been redeemed, hallelujah, family, through his blood. You see, when he went to Calvary and he became that sacrificial lamb and he paid that ultimate price on the behalf of all mankind. Oh, my goodness. And when they pierced his sides, it was the blood and the water that came gushing out. And that blood, he said that without the shedding of blood, there'd be no remission of sin. But he did it once and for always. Oh, my goodness. Oh, family, we have so much to be thankful for. It says in him we have redemption through his blood, that blood that he shed. The forgiveness, oh, my goodness, of sins. It's like he's taking this big eraser. Hallelujah in heaven and he's just wiped out every sin all the mess all the junk that we have gone through in the past he's wiped it clean and given us an opportunity for new beginnings and a fresh start now that's the kind of god that we serve i mean that's something to be so thankful for and it says uh through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, my goodness, there's that word grace, unmerited favor. It says, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will. But you know, when you get into the word of God, it's not a mystery anymore. He opens up his word. He shares what he has done, the, the promises that he has provided for us, provisions that he has made for us is all in the word of God. So what we have to do is we have to find out about getting into his word so we can find out what he's provided for us, what he's already promised us. Number nine, it says, and having made known, so it's not a mystery anymore. It says, having made known to us, the mystery of his will. And once you get in there, it's not a mystery anymore. According to his good pleasure, oh man, which he purposed in himself, his good pleasure. Oh, that's because he loves us so much. You have to understand that God is a family oriented God. He is so concerned about his family. He's concerned about every area and every aspect of our lives to the degree that we invite him into our lives to help us, to lead us, and to guide us through what his word says. Number 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. All things in Christ, hallelujah. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, family. We have an inheritance through what God's word says. Oh, my goodness. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according, oh, my goodness, to his counsel of his will. He works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ, oh, hallelujah, should be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also trusted. That's why he reminds us through what is word over in, in, in Proverbs number three, five and six. 
he says to trust in him with all our heart and soul and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, family, everything, in all our ways, he says to acknowledge him. And by doing so, then he's going to direct our paths. My, 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 this is the kind of God we serve. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. That's right, to the praise of his glory. And this is what takes place, family. Once you're in him and, and you strive to, to be the doer of what his word says, he just takes you from one degree of glory to another. Oh, wow. It's so awesome. It's so wonderful. It's so marvelous. <laughs> it's so magnificent. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's why I get so excited about the word of God. It says here, okay, number 13 again, in him you also trusted. After you heard, heard, what the, the word says, what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. In him you also trusted because we can trust him. He's not going to lie to us. He's not going to lead us uh, 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 off of a deep end. He's going to, he, because he loves us so much, he only wants the best for us. That's why we can afford to trust him. No, you say, I can't see him, but you have his word. You can trace him through what the word of God says. In who, in him, you also trusted. After you heard, hello, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of truth, because see, God's word is truth. He says, and you shall know the truth over in John uh, uh, 8 and uh, 36. He says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And when the son makes you or sets you free, you're free indeed. You're going to know the truth, family, through what his word says. God is not a liar. It says, the gospel of salvation Hallelujah. In, in whom also you have believed, you were sealed. Oh, my goodness. Sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And my goodness, he has promised us so much. He has given so much through what his word says. All we have to do is be open and receptive to receiving of what his word says and then be the doer of what his word says. And to that degree, one will never be completely happy or satisfied until you will or your will is to do his will. If you're, you make that choice that I want to be the doer of the word and just not the hearer only. We have such an awesome privilege at this time. As I had stated, leaving year 2016, going into 2017, I need to consider what have I accomplished in year 2016? And what do I want to do or strive to, to work on for 2017? Don't worry about making a new year's resolution. <laughs> just be the doer of the word <laughs> and that way you will succeed in your endeavors to accomplish the things that you have set out to do and that's the thing about the Lord his word says over in Philippians 4 and 13 that we can do how many things all things through Christ who strengtheneth us so we can do this God has not made us a failure creature. The only way man can fail is by not allowing or choosing the choice, hello, to take God at his word. Family, we want to take a few moments. We want you to hear this song, let it minister to you. Then we shall return. Stay tuned. Until 
selfishly died on Calvary. Oh, how you gave your life for me. Bruised, scorned, crowned your head with thorns. No greater love performed for me. Nails in your hands, nails in your feet, piercing your side. Could barely breathe, could have came down, yet you remain standing in all of the pride you pay. I never knew of a love so true. You gave your life and still I heard you. Lost so many times to supply you again. But I repent, forgive me for my sin. Thank you, family. Now, we'd like to take this time and pray with you. If you'll just repeat after me. Dear God, your word says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation.
Lord Jesus, you are now my Lord. You are my Savior. I want to thank you for taking spiritual torment for my sins. I want to thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties. Your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, 1 Peter 2.24, I was healed. By faith, according to your word, I receive my healing now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, and I say amen. Well, hi family, hi brother, hi sister, welcome to the family of God. Oh, we are so excited, hallelujah, for the step that you have now taken. On your screen is our, um, is our telephone number and our, our address because OCN would like to hear from you. You need to drop a line and let them know what you have done this day. They want to know. Now, if you are in need of additional prayer, you have the phone number on the screen, 323-638-2710. Again, area code 323-638-2710. And you can call and we'll have someone to pray with you. We just want to let you know that we love you. And OCN needs your financial support in order for the broadcast to stay on your local TV station. So just we thank you in advance for your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts of love. And we want to let you know that you are helping to make it happen. We thank you for tuning in, and we will see you for the next time. We say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. You paid it all up on the cross. You bled and died. Mm -hmm.